Shalom, shalom, y'all. Shalom, shalom. Just right. Am I upside down or I think my camera kind of, camera kind of weird. I think my camera's right, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody let me know, is my camera like, Upside down or sideways, I'm on my iPad. I'm not sure. I want to make sure I'm good. That's right. I want to make sure I'm not upside down, right? Can somebody let me know? Uh, type one if I'm if I'm right. If I can't really see. I don't. Know. I should be good. All right. Um, if y'all can hear me, let me know. I can't see no typing. Hold on. All right. All right. Well, um, this is Afroasiatic Hebrew. Um, all right. I think I think I'm good. I'm gonna just go with it. All right. This is Uziahu, um, Afroasiatic Hebrew. Hold on one second, man. One second. Hold on one second. All right, here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure I'm not upside down. Anyway, I'm about to get started. So anyway, this is Afroasiatic Hebrew. Eden is the origin of civilization. I'm just, um, and you guys can help me out. All right, you guys can help me out and let me know. Um, you know, you can let me know. Uh, what you know what you think or what what you know, maybe you can help assist me with this thing um Hold on one second All right So a Couple of things I just want to go over right quick um All right, hold on one second. All right, now, um, just trying to bring something up. Sorry about all this. All right, yeah, so basically, what I want to say, I want to say, uh, I'm Uziahu, I represent Afroasiatic Hebrew, and I just wanted to say that, uh, Eden, from my understanding that Eden is the origin of civilization. The reason why I say that is that um, I think I stated on a past on a past uh, post on Facebook, I was saying that 
Eden. Eden is is the continent. You know, um, Eden is a continent or a landmass because um, the scripture said that he planted a garden eastward in Eden. And if he planted a garden eastward in Eden, and that's by the Iraq and Iran border, then westward Eden, if you keep going west, you'll hit what? The Red Sea. Then once you cross the Red Sea and you keep going, if you keep going, you'll hit what? West Africa. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you'll hit the continent of Africa, and then you, and if you keep going west to the border, you'll hit West Africa. You know what I'm saying? And after that, you're in the, you, you know, you're in the ocean, you're in the sea, or whatever. So, um, so if if Iraq Iran border, the so-called Middle East, if that is where the Garden of Eden was at, all right, and that's eastward Eden, then of course westward Eden, you know, would um would be what we call Africa, all right? So eastward Eden is the so-called Middle East, and westward Eden is, is Africa. But if you, look at, if you look at the Garden of Eden and the four river heads, you'll see that um, the Garden of Eden, um, like one of the rivers actually crosses, you know, it, it's, it's on... The continent of Africa by like Egypt, Ethiopia area. I think it's uh, the Gihon, the Gihon um, River, if I'm not mistaken. You know, um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. So my whole my whole point is is that um, out of the Garden of Eden, you out of the four river heads, two of two of the rivers is actually on what we call the continent of Africa. And if I'm not mistaken, the other two is uh, what we call the Middle East. But um, even the Garden of Eden, when you look at the, um, when you look at the, uh, the area of Garden of Eden, it stretches from the Iraq-Iran border all the way by, uh, all the way by, um, you know, by Egypt, Ethiopia. That's just the Garden of Eden location, that area. So that area stretches from Middle East to the eastern, to the eastern, um, to the east, you know, east coast of Africa. You know what I'm saying? So the Garden of Eden stretches to Africa. So if the Garden of Eden, that location stretches to Africa, and then we say that, um, the Garden of Eden is eastward Eden, then westward Eden would be on the continent of Africa. So basically, in our in the in the Afroasiatic Hebrew worldview, in our paradigm, um, we call that area Eden. So Africa and Middle East was both one connected landmass, from my understanding, and we called it. Eden first. So that same area that we call Africa today, we first called it Eden. You know, so that's why I say that Eden, the continent Eden, but today we say the continent of Africa. But what I'm saying is that today the continent of Africa is only this part. But what the Hebrews, the Afroasiatic Hebrew um, paradigm, our worldview is that Eden was Africa and Middle East. It was one. And now today we call it Africa. So the definition of Africa would be what we call Africa and Middle East as one landmass. You know what I'm saying? So in the Afroasiatic Hebrew worldview, from my understanding, there was one, um, one continent. You know? So that's the first thing. So... I basically say that Eden is the first civilization, the first continent mentioned. All right. Then you have Garden of Eden. So the Garden of Eden is on, it shares the landmass on the Middle East and the continent of Africa. So the Garden of Eden is the first paradise. All right. And you have Adam, where you have Adama which is the first land, that's the land, Adama, is the ground, the soil, the earth, 
that is on the continent of Eden, what we call Africa. Then we were, then man was placed in the Garden of Eden, in that in that land, right? And that's on the continent of Eden or Africa. So, I mean, no, uh, Middle East, the Middle East part, but Middle East and also Africa is one. We call it Eden. Today we call it Africa. So, um, Hebrews, we will be North. East Edenic people, or today Northeast Africans. You know what I'm saying? Um, so Adam, he's the first man. Adama is the first land. Eden is the first civilization, first continent, and Garden of Eden is the first paradise. All right. Um, I'm going to do, I'm just, you know, I'm going to actually do like a, um, a keynote so I can show my different slides or whatever. I don't have the slides with me right now. All right. Another thing I want to say that if you look at the area of Adam, basically Adam inheritance or his, his area, Adam inheritance was the garden of Eden that gives you that location. Um, I think that's in that's in uh, Better Sheet or Genesis chapter two. All right, Genesis chapter two verse eight or Better Sheet, and Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. All right, so Better Sheet or Genesis chapter two eight it says, and Yahweh Elohim, oh Shalom, Shalom, my sister uh, Esther, Shalom. So, in Bereshit, or Genesis chapter 2, 8, it says, And Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. Right? And there he put the man whom he formed. But let's go back. Um, let, let, let me, let, you know what? Let me start. I'm going to start at Bereshit chapter 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth was finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So we see um, in, in Better She chapter 2, there is no, um, it's just Adam and Kuwa. So there was no other nations as of yet. There was no religions. There was no nothing else. Um, I like I like to go in chronological order with the scripture, and I'm like, okay, well, you know what? Right here, um, you know, right here is just Adam and Kuwa. So there is no Kemet, there is no Israel, there is no Abraham, there's not even Noah, Moses, there's not Rome, Greek, there's Greek, you know, there's nobody at this point. There's nobody at this point. So let's go in chronological order. All right. You know what? Let me back up. I'm sorry. Let me back up. I'm going to start at Genesis chapter 1, verse, hallelujah. Let me start here. Let me start here. I'm going to start at, um, I'm going to start at Better Sheep, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to start there. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Right. So. All right. So Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish. All right. So. Um, we understand Elohim to be Ruach, and Ruach is spirit. Ruach is wind. Ruach is spirit. All right. Toda, toda, sis. Ruach is wind. Ruach is spirit. Ruach is invisible. But if you also look up the word for Ruach, Ruach also, mind is in the definition. I think I said this some years back, that mind is is also in um, the definition of Ruach. So not only Ruach is spirit, 
Ruach is wind, Ruach is invisible, but Ruach has a mind. To have a mind, there's a Ruach consciousness. So Ruach is a living entity that is sovereign, that is conscious, that can teach, that can reveal. That's why we say wisdom, knowledge, and understanding come from the Ruach because it is a living entity that's invisible that can teach us, right? Okay. But when you look up the word Elohim, Elohim is Yah or the Ruach, the spirit, the invisible. But when you also look up the word Elohim, it's judges. When you also look up Elohim, it's the Malachim. Now, when we look at the seven, and, and I'm going I'm to do all this later, gather up all the, all the scriptures later to like pimp. I'm just doing it like kind of like a freestyle. When you look up the Malachim, there were seven Malachim in the presence of, of Yah. These Malachim look like men, but they look like men, the body of man first. And they was melanated. But that's in the definition of Elohim, right? So if you got the seven Malachim, the holy, the like the, the top. But then, you know what? I'm going to take my time because <laughs> it be so much popping in my head. On earth as it is in heaven. Now, the higher species is human, right? That looks like humans. And the lower species is the animals. And the heavenly, from my, under, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. You can always correct me if I'm wrong. But you had the top Malachim that they look like men. You had the lower class uh, Malachim that look like animals. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know if you had a mixture that was half animal, half human looking. But remember, y'all told us humans do not mix with animals. So we're not supposed to do bestiality. So we're not supposed to do that. Other cultures, other people may have done that. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and also, too, in other cultures, you do have other cultures that worship a half human, a half animal body or head and half human. Those could be these other type of angels or fallen Malachim, but I ain't trying to get too deep. My whole point is when you says, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, right? Yah is Ruach, he's spirit. But the Malachim looked like a man and looked like a black man too, right? So the first man, Adam, He's Edenic or he's African or he's Afro-Asiatic. So our physical shell, could it be that our physical shell man looked like the Malachim and then we have the spirit and the intellect and the life force of, of, of the Ruach of the spirit of Yah's spirit in us? You know what I'm saying? Could it be like a collaboration? I don't know. You know, that's just something that I meditated on. But anyway, let me finish. And Elohim said, so better sheet, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image and the image of Elohim created he him. Let me stop. So the first gender was male. All right. So the first gender was male and male has the chromosome, has the X and Y chromosome. X is female. Y is male. So in male, when we was created, we have both male and female. You see what I'm saying? Um, out of our body, out of our DNA, right? Out of our chromosome. Woman was created, so woman was created from our body, from our DNA, from our chromosome, from our body, right? Because we have, we already have female in us. So now you have woman made. Then man goes back into himself because he said bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. So man goes back into himself, but it's a woman. He's, he's not going into a man. He's going back into himself which is his counterpart, which is the opposite. Kawhi is the opposite. 
you know. So he goes back into himself. And then depending on his DNA, on his sperm, on his chromosome, the X and Y, you know what I'm saying? You know, um, the woman has X and X, if I'm not mistaken. So she has two X's. The man has X and Y. So when man, you know, comes together with his wife, he, he his, his seed, his DNA determines if it's going to be a male or a female, depending on the X or the Y. So first man had, um, you know, he has X and Y, he has male and female in him. And then woman was created out of man. Boom, now you have woman. Now woman can manifest male and female through her womb. You see how it works? So you first you had man. He had male and female. So by Yah being the scientist, right? <laughs> Wisdom, knowledge, and all understanding comes from him. Even in the first verse, in the beginning, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, it's time. Elohim created. Let's you know that there's a creator. So there's creationism. Um, the heavens, which is space, and the earth, which is matter. So time, space, matter, that's physics. So not only do you have science revealed in the first verse of Better Sheet, but you also have the creator or creation also in that same first verse. But let's let, let let it be. Let's let's take it slow. In the beginning, Elohim. So in the beginning was Elohim, and in the beginning, Elohim created. So now, in the beginning, Elohim itself existed, and now Elohim created. What did he create? The heavens and the earth. So, and that's why Deuteronomy four tell us: Don't worship anything in the heavens. Don't worship anything on earth. Why? Because the Creator created everything in the heavens and in the earth. That's Earth living creatures, any machinery, technology, anything. So we're not supposed to be worshiping UFOs, angels, stardust, meteorites, um, Malachim, none of that stuff. And anything on Earth, male, female, the female reproductive organs or system, the male reproductive organs or systems, animals, trees, all these things, anything in the air, anything in the water, we're only supposed to worship Yah. Yah Ikad. Ikad is one, but Ikad is also unity. You know what I'm saying? So we worship the one who created everything, right? So in the beginning, Elohim created. What did he create? The heavens and earth. Okay? All right. So I don't know. Maybe I may be jumbling around. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. So I just like to start it off of my Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, my worldview, my paradigm. So in the beginning, Elohim created. And when you look up the, when you look up yod hey wah hey, or, you know, people may say different things. People, you know, for short, Yah. Um, I say mm -hmm. Yah, Other people may say it a little bit different. That's okay. But it's yod hey wah hey. You know what I'm saying? Um, when you look up Yod, if I'm not mistaken, that means he will. And Hawa, if I'm not mistaken, that means breath. That um, that hey, wa, hey, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's a word in the concordance that means breath. And breath means to breathe, and breath is the evidence of life. So one breakdown of the word, of, of, of the name of the creator, it means Yod, he will, Hawa, breathe. He will breathe. He will exist. He lives. So Yah lives. You know what I'm saying? So, and he, and it means that he is self-existent because the root, so not only that he breathes, hold on, hold on, hold on. He breathes, right? He breathes. I'm going I'm to hit you with Genesis chapter two. to so also show you the essence of the creator. Because what, what's going to happen to man? He's going to breathe the breath into his nostrils. Yod, he will, hawa breathe. He will live. Yah lives and we will live. We become a living being. But anyway, let me get some of this water. All right. I hope I ain't going too too deep or whatever. Is that so Elohim created man in his own image, and the image of Elohim created he him, and then male and female created he them, of course, because he created man. 
then out of man, man's body in a sense gave birth to woman, but through the aid of the creator. You know what I'm saying? So the creator put man to sleep and he used his DNA. You know, he that's why he said bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. You feel me? That's not his daughter. That's his wife. You see what I'm saying? So that's a little bit different. That's his wife. You know what I'm saying? So both of them, both of them come together to create life. So they both, in a sense, are Elohim. You feel me? They both are creators. Because they both come together to create. Like Yah's a creator. He gave man and female created. He them. Now we have the the vehicle or the tools to create through the reproductive system right and i'll get into some hebrew pictograph later what ish and isha means ish and isha um i ish excuse me ish is aleph yod sheen right and isha is aleph sheen hey Olive and Sheen is, is that means fire. Olive and Sheen. So they both have fire. All right. The different letter in the in man is the yod, and then woman is the hay. So if you put it together, it's yod hay ya. But man has to be first. He has to be the head. If man is the head and woman, you know, is his opposite counterpart, you know what I'm saying? His partner, you know. However, some people say help me. Some people say opposite counterpart. But you know, they're working together. They're, they're working together to be one to, to create. And um, East and Esha, when you have them together to be one, it reveals the fire of Yah or the spirit of Yah. You know what I'm saying? Because Ish, Aleph, Yod, Sheen, and then Esha, um, Aleph Sheen Hey, the Yoda and the Hey is Yah, Psalm 68 4, by his name Yah, Hallelujah, Zephaniah Yah, Isaiah Yah. So we know that it's something about the Hebrew or something about these scriptures that connect back to the source. It's, it's for real, you know what I'm saying? All right. But anyway, um, let me get back to what I was saying because it's all going to connect because people say it's the Bible, the white man's book. As we see, no. <laughs> the scriptures is a Afro-Asiatic, Hebrew, Central, Afro-Asiatic, Central Shemitic, Hebrew, Israelite book. That's what it is. It's a melanated book because we're letting you know, because first of all, the Hebrews in our paradigm, we let you know that the Garden of Eden is by what? The borders of Iraq, Iran, and the Garden of Eden stretches all the way to Africa. To the, to the eastern edge of Africa. So we're letting you know that the first place. Right. And it's not the white man's book. It's the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew book. Which were melanated black shoe people. We got it. So we scratching that. We killing all that. And we was the first to to label. To mention that continent. In our, in our book. In our source. In Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2. We're talking about what we call Africa. We're killing it already. We giving you science in the first verse. The first verse, we don't give you physics. And also in the first verse, we don't clarify the creator according to our text. Our text gave you physics, science, and the creator. So the creator is the creator of science. And he uses science, but he also used, not only does he use physics, and I, I'm not I'm not a, even a deep science person. I need to, I, I just did psychology. I did the study of the mind. But I'm doing something called biblical psychology. I said the spirit controls the mind. The mind controls the body. Or is it the emotions? I said the spirit controls the mind. The mind controls the emotions. And the motion controls the body. And the body manifests the fruit. And we dedicate the fruit back to the source where it came from, which is the spirit. So that's kind of like my first breakdown of biblical psychology. So it's going to be Afro-Asiatic Hebrew biblical psychology where I'm trying to use psychology to help us out to get us in a proper state of mind. Now, I'm not like a great scholar, none like that. 
Uh, yep, spirit, yep, spirit controls the mind. The mind control, it says the mind controls the body, but I want to say the mind controls the emotions, which controls the body. You know what I'm saying? So the mind controls the emotions that controls the body, and the body produces the fruit that we dedicate back to the source where it came from. Now, if you have a different source, you're going to dedicate it to something else. So we dedicate our fruit, our children. We dedicate everything that we do back to the source, which is the Ruach, which is the spirit, which is Yah. But some people dedicate their stuff to other different things. So it's going to be different. But for our paradigm, we dedicate it back to Yah. All right. Um, all right, let me go. Like I said, I ain't trying to be too deep because I'm not even, I'm just a simple person. I see the deepness and the simplicity of stuff. I can't really get all that deep, you know, so that's why I'm going to need help with those who are the scholars. You know, I'm not a scholar. I'm just a brother. You know what I'm saying? But I just meditate on these scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shalom, shalom, cuzzo, shalom, malak, shalom. Yes, sir, cuz. All right. Um, so just to finish, um, like I said, I might be going back and forth. I'm not perfect, so bear with me, y'all. I just hope y'all getting it. You know what I'm saying? All right. So 27. So Elohim created man in his, in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. So the first blessing was Yah telling us to be fruitful and multiply. You know what I'm saying? So the first blessing was for us to reproduce. So the first blessing was for the first blessing was marriage. The first blessing was reproducing. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, <laughs> anything else ain't nothing higher than that. So, like, when people be dealing with same whatever, all this other stuff, there's nothing higher than man and woman coming together to produce life. That's when we are in our zone. That's when we're in what we was created for because we are life creators. You know what I'm saying? If you have a seedless man... That he can't produce. That's like seedless fruits. It can't produce. We we come from the earth. You see what I'm saying? So when we be eating, uh, don't get me wrong. When we be eating uh, uh, <laughs> fruits and vegetables because we come from the earth, that's cannibalism in a sense. Not us eating flesh. You know, I don't know, but I don't know. That that's just me on some weird stuff. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um. And Elohim blessed them, and Elohim said unto them, "Be um, Genesis one twenty eight, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the air, over the fowl of the air, and every let every living thing that moveth upon the earth." So that means we definitely can't worship anything in the sea, anything in the air, anything that's moving on earth, because we're supposed to have dominion over it. So how can we worship something that we're supposed to have dominion over? So that's the one thing right there. In our, in our breakdown, we don't worship anything that's in the air, that's in the sea, that's on earth, that creeps. So no, no, hey, I know everybody, other people do their thing, but for us, we don't do that. So like no cats, no dogs, no beetles, no uh, cows, no um, anything. And we don't worship man or woman either because we was made in the likeness and image of the creator. So we don't worship the male genitalia or the male reproductive system. We don't worship the female genitalia or the female reproductive system. You see what I'm saying? We don't do none of that. And we don't worship animals. So, you know, so we just getting us out the way. This is our paradigm. We getting us out the way. You know what I'm saying? Now, check this out. Elohim gave us the first diet in the beginning. You know, a lot of people like to be conscious. Okay, I'm going to be vegan. I'm going to be a fruitarian. Check this out in the scripture. People always want to talk about the scripture. First of all, we're going to let you know that we spoke about Eden, but today y'all call it Africa. We already spoke about this place. Stop playing. And we said that Eden, Eden is from the Iraq-Iran border all the way to West Coast Africa. So the Middle East and Africa is all one continent called Eden for us. And the Garden of Eden goes from from the Iraq Iran border by by Egypt Ethiopia and I'm going to get into some of that too. You cannot count the Hebrews out. You know why? Cuz with every major civilization we dealt with them. You had some of our people we married some comedic women. 
Out of the 12 tribes of Israel, two of the tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh, is Hamitic. So that's family. We don't hate. So Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, we don't waste our times all day hating on Kemet, hating on Ham, and hating on Edom. Those are our brothers, and we done married them. Our family dwells with them. Do we follow any of their religious practices? No. Because you, you, you know what's crazy? And, and I'm going to get into it. After I read this, I'm going to get into it. I, 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 I want somebody to look this up for me. I want somebody to look this up for me. It's different inheritance. I, I'm going to just say it. Let me just say this. When you look at Adama, when you look at the ground, Adam inheritance was the Garden of Eden. That's from Iraq, Iran border, all the way over to Egypt, Ethiopia area. That's the Garden of Eden. That was his inheritance. Second, Abraham inheritance was the promised land. But guess what? That's Iraq. That's from what? Like Iraq, Iran area, right? The Tigris, Euphrates, all the way over to, to Egypt. So it seemed like when you look layer one, this same area from Iraq, Iran to that uh, Egyptian, Ethiopian border, that right there, that was Adam's inheritance. Then that same location, Abraham inheritance. That same location, Israel's inheritance, the land of Israel. And somehow in that same location and even beyond is the Afro-Asiatic borders and location. Ain't that deep? What's going on here? Yah gave us Israel. First, he tried to give it to Adam. Because that Garden of Eden area is something special about that, that border. Then, you know. We kept dropping the ball. Then, you know, he gave it to Abraham. He was good, so he passed it down. Now it's Israel. You know what I'm saying? So Israel is bigger than that small little area that you think Israel is. It expands all the way by Egypt, Ethiopia, Eritrea, you know what I'm saying? All the way there. But I want somebody to look that up and see, am, am I right? We keep going in that same area. It's something special about that area, that landmass, or whatever. All right, but let me finish. Sorry about that, y'all. All right. 29. Better sheep, chapter 1, verse 29. Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree-yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So, if it's, if it's plant, if it's tree, with seed, you know, fruit or plant or herb, you know what I'm saying? That's that was our food. And it, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth where there wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. So you had humans, we were vegan or vegetarian, you know, we was vegan, and the animals ate life as well. We wasn't eating each other. On some human and human stuff, and we wasn't eating the animals at that time. So when you even come down to the uh when it comes down to how we ate, that's that right there. Alright. Um, and then 31, and Elohim saw everything that he made. Is the river with a color star written into it? Come over to the land of black ham. All right, hold on one second. I'm trying to see what more you say. Coming into the lands of Black Ham if you keep going south and to South Africa. Oh, wow. Okay. Then the two or three, like I'm saying, you're coming into the lands of Black Ham. Wow. <laughs> the, the, the truth about to come out. Now, check this out. Now, check this out. All right. Better see Genesis chapter 2. Now we about to get into it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Check this out. It's only Adam and Kawhi. So you can't be like, well, hey, man, I don't do the Sabbath because I'm Muslim. I don't do the Sabbath because I'm Christian. I don't do the Sabbath because I'm Jewish. I don't do the Sabbath because I'm this. No, the Sabbath, the seventh day. It's only Adam and Eve. This is before religion. This is before the nations. This is before the different languages. This is before the Greeks, the Romans, everything. This is Adam and Kawhi, the two E. This is Eden. 
These are the two. They are Edenic. They are Edenic. Mm-hmm. They, they are Edenic. So Adam and Kuwa are the first Eden, Edenites. Eden. Edenites. Or what we call today Africa. I don't have a problem with the word Africa. We call it Eden first. So I'll say Eden first. Then I'll say, okay, well, what you call Africa slash Middle East. But Africa and the Middle East, that's all one continent, which is boom, which is Eden. All right. Now check this out. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work which Elohim that made. So this is just every week. We're just confirming that the creator created. And this is, you know. So it, this, the Shabbat is not a Hebrew. It's not even a Hebrew thing. Where the Hebrews at? Adam and Kawhi no Hebrew. Let's keep it 100. Adam and Kawhi no Hebrew. Adam and Kawhi no Israelite. <laughs> but Adam and Kawhi, they are from Eden. They're Eden, Edenites. Or they're Edenic. You know what I'm saying? And because in that same location is Afroasiatic. Of course, they wasn't called Afroasiatic at that time. We just know they was eat. I'm just saying that it just so happened when you research Afroasiatic, it covers though that area. That's all I'm saying. So I'm not saying that Adam and Eve was Afroasiatic. But today, with all of the knowledge and all of the things, we would say Edenic. We would say African. But they were definitely in the Afroasiatic areas and realms or whatever. All right. Four. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's check this out. I said these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. And in the day that um that Yahweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens, better she or Genesis chapter two, verse five. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. All right. But there went a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Um, I know y'all know, like, you know, especially in the summertime, like in different places, especially down south, you know, um, in the morning, the early morning, the, the grass is wet. But it didn't even rain because it remember it said and there went up a mist from the earth that watered the whole face of the ground. Because in the warm morning, you had that mist. You had that dew. You know, you had that mist on the grass already. In certain places. So that's just some more stuff. This is just Genesis chapter 2. That's just some more stuff. You feel me? All right. Now check this out. Seven. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground. So that's Adama. You know what's crazy? Check this out, y'all. Can y'all see the board? Okay, check this out. Can y'all see the board? Let me see. We got Olive. We got Dalit. We got Mem. And we got Hey. I don't know if you can see that. That's Olive, Dalit, Mem, Hey. That's Adama in the in the Hebrew pictograph, right? But that right there. That's Aleph, Dalet, Mem. That's Adam. Hey means behold. But this is Adama, which is ground. So in the Hebrew pictograph, all right, hold on. Let me show y'all. All right, so look. You see Aleph, Dalet, Mem, and Hey. Aleph, Dalet, and Mem spells Adam. Hey means behold. So in the Hebrew pictograph, Adama means behold Adam. Or Adam is what, and when hey is at the end of a word, it means what comes out of. So Adam is what comes out of what? Adama. Come on, y'all. <laughs> and, and, and look at Adam. Aleph is first. Dalet and Mem is Dom, which is blood. So Adam is the first blood. He's the first ancestor. 
And so our first ancestor comes out of what? The Adama, the ground. Thus you come and thus you shall return. I'm about to do all, because I do the Hebrew pictograph stuff as well. I pray that, you know, that, that Yah opens up all our minds and hopefully we can see that. You know what I'm saying? Like our stuff, even our Hebrew, our Hebrew pictograph, that's real stuff. It's a living language, man. You can't, English, no, I don't, no other language can really do that. The only other language that I know that's close to this is, is hieroglyphics. It's the metanetta. Because it, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's similar like Hebrew. Those are the only two languages that I know that's dealing. And I want to learn metanetta, you know, as well. And shout out to brother, uh, um, shout out to brother Zion Lex. Because he's about to dive into the metanetta. He's getting to that. He's about to teach people. And even shout out to brother Divine Prospect. He knows this Hebrew pictograph as well he be breaking it down you know what i'm saying and 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 this so my area is afroasiatic hebrew this hebrew pictograph and doing it like that all right so i hope y'all was able to see that all right all right so let me get back and i hope that was edifying i got way more i got way more it's so much i be getting scared of it it's so much I be getting scared of that Hebrew pentagram because it goes so deep. I don't want to be scaring people, but it goes deep. It goes deep. You know what I'm saying? It goes deep. All right, now check it. Now, it says, and um, seven, and Yahweh Elohim formed man out of the dust of the ground. So he formed man out of Adama because the ground means behold Adam. So we know even from the Hebrew pentagram that this is true, <laughs> right? And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. But if you look at the name of Yah, yod hey wah hey, yod means he will. Um, hey wah hey means breath, right? So another form of Yah name means that he will breathe, right? So if he will breathe, that's breath. You know what I'm saying? And somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I'd seen when I looked up, when I looked up the name of Yah, they had another concordance number. It was like 19 something. And then when I went there, it said that that was breath. So somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? But we do know that we see here that um, in better sheet, chapter two, verse seven, Yahweh Elohim forming out of the dust of the ground. So we see in the Hebrew, Adama means ground. So we know that man came from the ground. All right. All right. And he breathed, breath, he breathed breath into his nostrils, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So, you know what life, you know what death is? First, we didn't exist. Then Yah molded our bodies. Then he brewed the breath of life in us. And then we, we became a living being and we rose up. Right. And now we walk. You know what death is? Death is the reversal. Now the breath of life leaves your body, bloop, and you go back, you lay back down, bloop, and then your body decomposes back to the dust. That's why if you go to somebody's casket a year later, you'll see the dust or the ashes, and then you'll see the bones. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, you know, so it's, it's basically the reverse. Because remember, it said, dust you came from, and dust you tell return. Shall you shall return? You feel what I'm saying? It's just the reversal. It's just the reversal. And I don't know about this, but I think your mind, your spirit, you know, like an airplane that has a black box. You know what I'm saying? Um, your mind and your spirit, it, it, it records everything, like the memories, you know what I'm saying? So um if I'm I, I'm gonna just say this. I'm gonna just say this. Um, not to, I just want to say something, not saying, let me say this. Let me say this. Mm-hmm. Cause he blew, he blew the breath of life in us. The Ruach, he blew the Ruach in us and Ruach is spirit is wind. You know what I'm saying? And then we became a living being. And then what happens is that breath goes back to the source, but you're unconscious, you're asleep. Your body is gone. So that means that what I'm not saying it's like some box that Yah has your spirit and you know, I ain't finna get mythical and spooky. But what I'm saying is that 
that your mind holds these memories. You feel what I'm saying? And somebody can do something with your body. They can chop you up here, throw you here. Y'all has the power to know where you at, bring you back together, and then put you back, put your spirit and your mind back into your body. Then you can become a living being again, but picked up where you left off. That's why I'm like, death and resurrection. I believe in the resurrection. That don't make, I mean, that to me, that that makes spiritual sense according to my our paradigm. Because remember, man didn't exist. Then he became a living being. So now that man is a living being, he can go back to non-existence. And when he didn't exist, he wasn't conscious. So death is not conscious. First, he was in a, a, a just a, a state. His body was dead. It was just a shell. Then the breath was put into him. Then he became a living being. But you know what's deep? Even though we have our living being, we can also like, so there's two different things going on. You have like, I call it the factory or the battery spirit like that, that keeps us going in our mind and everything. But then the, the spirit of Yah can come into us or the spirit of Satan can come into us. That's why you got to guard your mind and guard your spirit because these two different things can pop hit in your head. You feel what I'm saying? One can come and the other one can come. So you got to kind of prove all things, prove all spirits and be guarding it. You feel what I'm saying? You know, everybody has the breath of life in them. If you evil or not, you have that. Hitler had the breath of life in him and then the breath of life was taken away. Righteous man had the breath of life in him and then when he died, it was taken away. So both can have the breath of life. You know what I'm saying? But the key is, is that because the spirit controls the mind. So if the spirit controls the mind, you want the spirit of Yah to teach you, to guide you, and these different spirits. I, I might, I may need some my in, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh these different spirits, they can they also have a power that they can do something with your body. Where powers and th different things can happen as well. And that's not on some old extra mystical stuff that can happen. Either you're empowered by the spirit of Yahweh, you're empowered by the spirit of, of, of something different, or some you know, a Satan or something else. But let me get to it. I ain't trying to go. Um, I ain't trying to. All right. All right. Let, let, let me finish, y'all. Oh, thank you. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Now, here we go right here. All right. So wherever man, it says in Yahweh Elohim, formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, one thing I would need some help with. See, I'm a person that so I need some help with stuff. You feel me? But we, we, I, I only, only have a part. It's us. We all have parts so we can fit it together. I only have a part. But check this out. Um, from, from what I'm seeing right here, it says, And Yahweh Elohim formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living, a living soul. I'm thinking this right here, that's on the continent of Eden, but I don't know where it's at. So we know that he was created on the continent of Eden. So the first man was created in Eden. The first man was created in Africa, but probably on the Middle East side, actually, of Africa or the Eastern Eden. See, the Middle East is Eastward Eden and Africa is Westward Eden. Let's get it. 100 is one landmass. OK, now. Then it says, and then Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, which is the Middle East part. And there he put the man who he formed. So man was created somewhere in Eden. And then Yah put him, boom, in eastward in Eden. You feel me? Westward Eden is, um, you know, Africa all the way to West Africa. Eastward Eden is, uh, you know, from, from Yemen, Saudi Arabia, you know. Uh, Sinai all the way to the border of Iraq and Iran. All right. And what's deep is this. Uh, okay. Let me finish. And Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he formed. So that's the Iraq, Iran, Kuwait border. Now, now, now I'm giving you a visual. And y'all can look it up. Check it out. 
9. And out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Oh, um, Esau, do you have the, um, remember that little uh, racer board, that small one that I can do some stuff? Thank you. All right. Um, and out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So hold on now. All right, let me read that again. And out of the, so first, and Yahweh Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he formed. So that's Iraq, Iran, uh, Kuwait border. All right. And it says um, nine. And out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life. Hold on now. The tree of life is also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want y'all to listen to some. This is what I call. So you got the tree of life. You got the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That means that knowledge of good and evil ain't life because you have the tree of life. You have all this knowledge of good and evil that don't bring you to life. But that's two different things. Now, check this out. 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Right. And from thence it was parted and became it to four heads. The name of the first is Pishon. That is it which comp compasses the whole land of Havila, where there is gold. If somebody looked that up, it, if I'm not mistaken, is that Saudi Arabia? Um, and the gold of that land is good. There is Bedlam and the Onyx Stone. And the second, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that, Shalom, Shalom to everybody. Uh, the same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. All right. And the name of the third river is Hedekel. That is it which go toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Right. Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and, and to keep it. So if you look at this location, that's Kuwait, Iraq, Iran border area. That's where the Garden of Eden is at. You know why that's important? Check this out. Because right in that area, you have what? You have Su Sumer, you have Sumeria, you have Babylon, you have Persia. <laughs> you have all that stuff right there. But guess what else you got? You got the Fertile Crescent. Hold on now. The Fertile Crescent. I see you can't close the door. The Fertile Crescent. Huh? Is that a coincidence? Is that a coincidence? That's my question. Is that a coincidence? That the Garden of Eden is right by Iraq, Iran, Kuwait border. You got Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent right there. You have <laughs> you have Babylon, you have you have uh oh that's see thank you. You got Babylon, you got Sumeria. Now, we know that Sumeria, see, Eden is the first origin of civilization, but Sumeria is like, when it comes down to nation, it's like, how, how can I say it? Sumeria is, how can I say it? How can I say this? Somebody help me out, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> it's a collaborative. Eden is the origin, the first origin of civilization. But when you come down to these great civilizations, then the next one you have is Sumer because Eden, that's with Adam and Eve. But when you talk about like nation, then you have Sumer. You feel me? The Sumerians is right there by what? The Fertile Crescent. Now, let me hit you with something. See, I got this now. I can do something right here. Check it. Let me show you what Eden means. <laughs> let me show you what Eden means. Eden is Ayin. Dalit is Dor. So Eden and also the lands of Ur, the child. Then, yep. They, yes, yes. Now look. This is this is Ayin. This is Dalit. This is noon. So this is Ayin. This is Dalit. This is noon. This is to see. This is the door. And then this is life. 
So, so this is the Hebrew pentagram. This is C. This is door, and this is life, right? So check this out. So Eden, Eden means to see the door to life. But hold on. You see that seed? You see that seed, right? What does the seed do? What does the seed do? Look at this. What does the seed do? It fertilizes. What does it fertilizes? The fertile crescent. Eden. See the door to life. But noon, this can also mean civilization. See the door to civilization. Now, every coin, you have a positive and you have a negative. This is what I've been holding. You have a positive, you have a negative. You have the blessing, you have the curses. You have life and you have death. Now, the good side is to see the door, to see the door to the, to the, to life, right? But guess what? But guess what, you all? There's a flip side. What happened in the Garden of Eden? I'm going to read to you. The flip side is C. Uh, Dalit and Noon is Dan. That's the judge or see the judge. See the judge. See the judgment. What happened in the Garden of Eden? We was kicked out because we ate from the knowledge of good and evil. You see what I'm saying? So Dalit and Noon is judge. Either see the door to life or see the judge. Who's the judge? Yah's the judge. And he judged us. He said, you up out of here. I'm kicking you up out of Eden. I'm kicking you up out of basically the promised land. What happened with Israel? We didn't do right. We got kicked up what? Out of the promised land. And why is it that the border of, could it be that the border of the Garden of Eden is also the border of Abraham, is also the border of Israel? Could that be? Man, hey, all praise to Yah. <laughs> hey, all praise to Yah. I, I hope, you know, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just extra excited. You know, I'm not perfect. I got errors. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know. Either see the door to life. That's the blessing. And also see the door to civilization. That seed, Fertile Crescent, right there. And, 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 and you know what? The fertile crescent go, it goes around. Look, look this this Iraq Iran border, right? The fertile crescent, Eden, right? That sea, the fertile crescent go all the way around, and then Egypt is on that side. So you gotta hit, you gotta hit it first. Do you know the fertile crescent? It starts by Iraq Iran, uh, Iraq Iran area by Babylon by. Mesopotamia, you know, Mesopotamia by Ur of the Chaldeans, by Sumeria, right? It starts there and the edge, it goes, it goes all the way around and boom, then Egypt is there. So the second one is Kemet. The first is Sumeria. But Sumeria, if I'm not mistaken, is Shemetic. And in Genesis 9, 27, Noah said, blessed be the Elohim of Shem. And Shem means name. The name of Yah, hallelujah. And in the name of Yah, the first man and the first woman reveals the name of Yah. Ish and Isha. Come on, y'all. Praise Yah. Come on. This is what I've been sitting on. I pray and edify. So Eden, Eden is the first origin of civilization. And then when it comes down, and, and Adam and Kuwa was the originators of that, right? But then we had the flood. Then you had Noah. Then you had Shem. Now we starting back. So through Shem. And I think brother, shout out to brother Zion Lex. He says Sumeria actually goes back to Shem. So now you got Shem. And blessed be the Elohim of who? Shem. Abraham comes from who? Shem. Israel comes from who? Shem. Ishmael comes from who? Shem. But Ishmael and Isaac worship Yah first. Before this other stuff. Man, come on, y'all. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back, man. Let's bring it back. Let me do this. 1446 BCE. Afro. Asiatic. Hebrews. 
1446 BCE, Afro-Asiatic Hebrews, Israel is a nation, not a religion. It wasn't no religious stuff. It was the nation of Israel. It was the nation of Israel, right? Then, you know, 325, 622, and 740. Then you got Christianity, right? Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. You know what I'm saying? You got all that stuff. But that's, look, 1446 BCE. And then that, that's about 1,700, 2,000 years later. And then 1446 BCE, it was Afro-Asiatic Hebrews, and it was Kemet. It was us two going back and forth. It was us two. It was either Kemetic, it was either Kemetic science, or it was either the Hebrews. It was those two. And it was said, do not hate on, do not hate on the Egyptians. Don't hate on them, and don't hate on the Edomites. And out of the 12 tribes, two of them is Kemet. It's half Kemet, half Hebrew. Ephraim and Manasseh. Because our brother Yosef, his wife was Kemetic. Come on, y'all. All. But guess what? Oh, my God, I need to charge it. Thank you. All right, um... All right, I know I'm all over the place. I just wanted to, uh, thank you. All right. I need this. All right, I will, um, <laughs> y'all i gotta plug this thing in so i might be all up on me right now i'm gonna talk plug this in a little bit all right all right y'all i just want to finish this finish this part now check this out all right um so that's that. So let me let, 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 let me finish. Um yeah. Alright, let, let me finish this part. Alright, it says and Yahweh all right, so I'm gonna go back to Better Sheet, chapter two, verse seventeen. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back, let me go back, let me go back. Alright, let me go back, let me go back. Alright. Um and Yahweh. Uh, I'm going to go to better see chapter 2, verse 15. Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Right? 16. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man. This is the first commandment. Mm -hmm. Commanded the man of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof it thou shalt surely die. You know mm -hmm. what happened you all? You know, you, you know what we're forgetting? You remember the tree of life that was in the midst of the garden? Remember, he said of every other tree, he said of every tree you can freely eat. Just not the tree of the knowledge, good and evil. So guess what? He gave us a commandment of life because the tree of life was one of the trees that we was, we was going to be able to eat from. So guess what? We was created on what? On earth, right? So we would have eaten from the tree of life. We would have had everlasting life. Where? On earth. We wasn't going to the cosmos to get everlasting life. Right? Because the tree of life was literally on earth, what we call Eden or Africa. There's a location. This ain't no spookism. Look, this ain't no white man stuff. This ain't no European stuff. This ain't none of that. This is straight Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, original indigenous. This is us. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, we started off letting you know, boom, Middle East slash Africa. And the Garden of Eden is on the outer, the eastern border of 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 africa so we're already landing on africa in genesis chapter two come on y'all stop playing you know what i'm saying we the first to call the continent we the first to name that continent so we all about it we called it eden come on man stop playing i don't look all right 
Now check this out. All right, and then 18, and Yahweh Elohim said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him, right? And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam 20, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. All right, 21. Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. Stop. When we when we go into surgery, what do we go under? They put you to what? To sleep or you go under. Yah is the first surgeon, as we see. And he somehow he put us to sleep. So he used the first, what what they call that? Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Come on now. And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took out his rib. And closed up the flesh instead thereof. Was that stitches? Sold them back up. So hold on. Not to get spooky, not to get weird. But who was the first to Adam in a sense gave body, gave birth? Yah used the body of Adam to create to give birth to Kuwa. He was put to sleep. He was opened up. Rib, that could be DNA. That could be, you know, when you look at the D, look, when you look, check, now, now hold on, hold on now. When you look at the DNA, right? You look at the chromosomes, don't, ain't it ain't like a little ladder, like a spiral. What if he took a rib or took one up? Because remember, back in our day, we didn't have extreme language. We, we only had to use what we had to use. So imagine if we're, if we're talking about something, we can only describe something based on the language that we had. You feel what I'm saying? We can only describe something based on the the tech, like the limited language that we had. So what if I, what if I'm trying to describe a TV? How would I describe it with the limited language that we have? Because we never seen a TV. Could it be? I don't know. Could it be rib? Could that be some genetic? Like all right, well I'm a um because you know male holds both the X and Y chromosome, so female already lives in us when he created us, right? Because if you're going to have a boy or girl, it's determined by the sperm or the, 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 the DNA, the, the chromosomes of the male. You feel what I'm saying? So woman already lived inside us. So he just, maybe he just extracted woman out and then created her. You know what I'm saying? So woman and children were created, is created from the body of man. Because man's body gave birth, man's body bled, man's body was opened up. And stitched back up, you know, so he had a wound. He had, you know, he, you know, his body was opened up to give birth to woman. That's him. That's him. Think it, look. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had made for man, made he a woman and brought her into the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called Isha because she was taken out of Esh. Ish and Esha, remember I told you, Ish and Esha is what? It, it reveals Yah. So her, her first name was Esha, then after she was called Kua. I want y'all to peep that too. See, I, I, I keep going over Genesis chapter 1 through 5. I've been actually doing this for some years. Like I just keep going back over and over and over and over. It's something deep about this. I just keep going over and over and over and over and over. Because I feel like that's the foundation. It's a, like, it's a lot of psychological information we can receive. The weakness of man, the weakness of woman. What we can do in the marriage. Even polygyny. I mean, I ain't trying to bring it up. You have monogamy in, in, in Genesis 1, 2, 3. You even got polygyny in Genesis chapter 4. I mean, polygyny in Genesis chapter 4. Everything's covered. You got Africa. You got surgery. You got science. You got a lot of stuff already covered here. You got a lot of stuff covered here. All right. Therefore shall man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and there shall be one flesh. So that, 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 that shows you. And they both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed. All right. Now check this out. 
So right there we see that um right there I hope we see hold on I'm gonna bring it back over here so y'all can see y'all can see the board. My my power my stuff is low so I had to plug it up to get some juice so it won't go out. Alright, we back over here now. Now check this out. So so this is what I'm saying. So Afro-Asiatic Hebrew, Eden is the origin of civilization. Right? So we got Eden, which is the first civilization, the first continent mentioned. Adam is the first man. I demise the first land in the Garden of Eden is the first paradise. You know what I'm saying? And he even told you. He had he had stuff that looked good and that was good to eat. You know, when you go to, and I haven't even been there. When you go to like Jamaica, you go to these places, it's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You go to these places, they got the palm trees, it's tropical, everything looked good. You know, and, and, and paradise, you usually have some good scenery, and it's and, and it's you and your woman or whatever, however your setup is, you and your wife or you and your wife, whatever. Whatever, because cause I'm gonna have to start mentioning that because that is a Afro-Asiatic Hebrew paradigm. So in the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew paradigm, we bless. And we, we ask God to bless righteous monogamy and righteous polygyny. We don't discriminate between the two. I'm not going to hate on monogamy and I'm going to hate on polygyny. Because we know that Yah can bless both. And if everybody's in Yah, it can be a blessing on both. Both can be used to be fruitful and multiply. Both can be used to give honor and praise to Yah. Both can. So I'm not going to be the one who's going to separate or divide the two. No. Because if we say that, then our Messiah and then our uh, our priesthood, our kings, our prophets, our teachers, our the man of wisdom, the man of strength, all of these people came from that. So, you know what I'm saying? And, and I bless and I pray y'all that he bless our foremothers of Israel, of our nation. That's the Afro-Asiatic I'm speaking on everything, y'all, because I'm about to get to Genesis chapter four. So for me, I don't, I, I'm not hating on Kemet. I'm not hating on Ham. I'm not hating on Edom. I'm not hating on monogamy. I'm not hating on polygyny. I'm not even hating on, on the Gentiles because if Noah's sons was Ham, Shem, and Japheth, you know that Japheth was also, he, he, originally, he was black. When you look at the black Greeks and the black Romans and those black Asian people and the black Chinese and the black Japanese and the original, the indigenous Filipinos and all that stuff. You will see that they was black as well. I call it what micro evolution where we're adapting to our uh, environment. Like I'm not a big science, you know, I'm not, I don't know everything about all this stuff with science, but you know, if we get farther away from the sun, we get lighter. Like if you go up North in the United States, you're going to get lighter than if you're down South, you're going to get darker. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's why I have a group called uh, Hebrew Manic Polygyny for the Glory of Nick. Yah, not the vanity of man or woman. Because woman can have vanity and man can have vanity. Woman can have ego. Man can have ego when it deals with polygyny. The, uh, the first wife can have pride. The incoming wife can have pride and ego. She can try to compete. It's a bunch of stuff. The man can just be on some on some weird stuff. My advice to anybody is to, if everybody's putting Yah first, and see, the man has to submit to Yah first. We we have to show our women how to submit, because, man, we have to submit to Yah. We have to serve Yah. And then we teach our women and children how to, you know, cater to us, and we all just working together, you know, for him. It has to be about him. It works if it's for him, you know. So, yeah. But anyway, um... So you have Eden, hold on, so let me read over. So you have Eden, you have Adam, you have Adamai, you have the Garden of Eden. All right, this time I was writing it, I was just jotting stuff down when I was at work. So you got Eden, you got Eastward Eden, Westward Eden, Southern Eden, a Southern Eden and Northern Eden. And that's Middle East and Africa. Eden is one continent, one landmass, starting at the Iraq and Iran borders, going to West Coast of Africa, what we call Eden in ancient time, it's called Africa today. But Africa, a.k.a. Eden, was also known to include Middle East. And then I read that um, 
I read about the inheritance, Adam inheritance, the Garden of Eden, Abraham inheritance, the Promised Land, Jacob Israel inheritance, the land of Israel, and Afroasiatic borders and location, the Afroasiatic area, it keeps covering the same thing. All right, all. Um, I said Adam is the first patriarch, Kuash the first matriarch, but the matriarch came out of the patriarch because out of man's body came woman. So the woman or the wife and the children comes from the actual body of man. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's not for everybody. It's nothing to be forced on either. But um, so when so when, so when you come when you come to the breakdown that women and children or the wife and children came from the body of what of man, right? Okay. So I remember there was a scripture that talked about the curses of Israel. It says where your women and children shall rule over you. So if that's a curse and women and children shall rule over you, then that, that's not something that's right. Now, um, you know, because like we come from, that's like man trying to go against where we come from. We come from the creator. So us trying to rule over him, like, or trying to like, that's not, you know, we, we, we're working one with them. So, you know, I'm just saying like, when, when you have the family together, man, woman, and children, then it works. It works in Yah. So all I was just trying to say was, when, when I look, because I have here, you have patriarch, you have matriarch. Adam had male and female, so out of Adam came female, the, the wife. And then out of Adam came the children, boys and girls. So through Adam's body, his wife and his daughters and sons came from his body. So that's why it's it's not a patriarch where we abuse and women saying that women can't think and, and can't be smart and all that type of stuff. No, it's just, from my understanding, well, the Afro-Asiatic Hebrew view of patriarch is because that woman was created. Remember, he said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. I shall call you woman. So they're working together to create. You know, they're working together in Yah. You know what I'm saying? All right, I think I covered about the chromosomes. Um, is there anything else? I think that might, hold on, let me see. Let me check. Oh, okay. Here. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So, all right, all right, now check this out. Here you go. Genesis chapter three. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye have Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Oh, hold on, hold on. I want to say this. Now, in, in the end of chapter 2, right? In the end of Genesis chapter 2. And th th this is just me. You don't have to take my word. It says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So they wasn't ashamed of being naked, right? That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Now, Genesis chapter 3, 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye, have Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Right? And the servant said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. But Elohim doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Hmm. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. And she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them were uh, open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. Alright. Then they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife <clears throat> hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said unto him, <clears throat> Excuse me, let me just water. Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. But you remember in Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, they was naked and not ashamed. So it was something about whatever this was that they ate that changed the whole perception, perspective. Now they're ashamed. It's kind of like when you're innocent and then you get exposed to something and then like you can't go back or unsee or unknow. It's like it opened your mind up. Um, I don't know if that's connected. You know, I ain't trying to get extra spooky, but I'm going to just say this. So let me say this. So you have the first man and the first woman. We know that they're identic. We know that they're black, right? So you have a black man and a black woman that's naked. Okay. Then the serpent, which is crafty, very wise, right? Is speaking to the woman, but the serpent is speaking to the woman as she's naked and saying she could be a god. Right? Hold on. All right. And the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. I ain't gonna go too deep into it, but I'm just saying that, hmm, you have a serpent, you have a black woman, you have her naked, and she can be considered as a god or a goddess. So a black woman is God, she's naked. Black woman, God, naked, serpent. Wise. I don't know if there's a connection. Maybe y'all see one. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> I'm just saying that you do have certain paradigms. They say that the black woman is God because of her nakedness, because of how her body is, and because what she can do with all what she can give birth and she can have she her body can be like this, and it's a kind of a worship of the body, but Deuteronomy 4. Tell us do not worship man and do not worship woman. So man, we don't worship man's reproductive system or his genitalia. We don't worship woman's reproductive system or her genitalia. We don't worship the nakedness of anyone. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. That was just something that was on my mind. But um, but let me see. All right. I just want to say something back to the man. And it's Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground, or the Adamah, because remember, Adamah means behold Adam. Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. That's what I was talking about earlier when I was saying out of the ground. Remember, Adamai means behold Adam, and we was just the ground. He blew the breath of life, and we was brought up to uh, to be living being. And then the ground we shall return. So it's just letting you know that death is when the spirit leaves the body, and then the body goes back. You know, and decomposes where you have the bones and then you have the body as, um, you know, as the dust, you know, or it goes back to Adama. And also, I think we're like, what, 70 percent water. The earth is 70 percent water. So if you look at if you look at how to take care of the earth, you also look at how to take care of us. because We need the same minerals. We need sun. You know how the plants. What is it? Photosynthesis. They need the sun at the photos. Ain't that like their melanin? Isn't that like the plant's melanin, the green hue? That's like the plant's melanin. And the sun, you know, is hitting the plant, you know, for it to grow and it, it to be healthy. So we have melanin too. You know what I'm saying? For us, we need that sun for us to be healthy. I don't know. I'm just trying to make these different connections. You know what I'm saying? Um, but anyway, to wrap everything up, because I ain't trying to keep going over and over and over. To wrap everything up, 
Um, I'm saying Afroasiatic Hebrew that Eden is the origin of civilization. So to recap, when you look at Eden, I show what Eden was. Oh, the Garden of Eden. Let me hit you with that and I'll be done. Remember, it says that he was walking in the garden. Now check this out. Now you have, it's called um, Gan. Gan. Oh, hallelujah. You got, um, I think, I think that's, is that Gmail? I think that's Gmail and Noon. So that's Gmail and Noon, right? Gmail and Noon, that's Gan, that's Garden. And then, of course, again, you got Eden, right? All right, so you got the Garden of Eden. You got noon. All right, you got, um, hold on. You got Ayin, you got Dalet, and you got noon, right? So Gimel can be a foot. A foot can mean to walk or to travel. It can also mean to lift up. It can also mean like pride or whatever. So the pride of life or to walk, right? Gmail. You got Ayin, remember it's to see the door to life. So you have two noons, right? Um, so you can be uh C C C and walk. Hold on, what what is it? Walk and see. So hold on, walk and see. The door to life and civilization. If I'm not mistaken, that's what the Garden of Eden means according to how I break down the Hebrew pentagram. So walk and see. So it's walk and see the door to life and civilization. Because in the Garden of Eden, that's where civilization started. Now, Eden is the whole continent, right? But the Garden of Eden is right by the Fertile Crescent, right? <laughs> and the noon looks like a sperm. Noon looks like a seed. So, you know what I'm saying? So that noon also lets you know that it activate it activated the Fertile Crescent for life. You feel me? And remember, it was plush land. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. You know, maybe, I mean, you know. You know. Oh, hold on. And, and let me show you this. The Isha, Isha to encourage everyone out there so you got olive you got yo and you got sheen right you got olive you got sheen and you got hey all right so this is ish See, this is Ish. This right here, this is Ish. And this is Isha. Right? So that's Olive. That's Yod. And that's Sheen. That's Ish. Olive and Sheen spells fire. Fire can be desire. It can be, it can destroy. And you see, woman has it too. Olive and Sheen. Fire and fire. Right? When you double sum in Hebrew, I think it, it, it becomes great. So if you got this fire and that fire, boom, it comes together. It can destroy the whole block. It can burn down the house, burn down the block, you know, infernal, you know. And then fire can be anger. It can be desire. It can be lust, passion. It can be all that. We have that faculty within us. We have that fire, right? And that can be that strange fire because if it's lust and if it's vanity, that's that strange fire, right? You know, idolatry, we loving ourselves. That's that, you know, we got the fire in us, you know. See, you have the the lake of fire, and then you have Yah, he's a consuming fire. But he can also have fire on the what? On the bush, and it don't burn you. It just refines you. It purifies you. See, you want the fire of Yah that purifies you, not the fire of Yah that destroys you. You feel what I'm saying? Now, you have fire, you have fire. Boom, fire, right? But check this out. Check this out. This is Yod. 
And this is hay. This is yod hay. Let me show you. Yod and hay is yah. That's um. Psalm 68, 4. Psalm 68, 4. By his name, Yah. Right? So you got Yah right there. But when you merge it together, it's the fire of Yah. And the fire of Yah is the Ruach HaKodesh. So you want the Ruach HaKodesh or the spirit of Yah to dwell with you, to dwell amongst you. And for it to bless you. And when you come together, you produce life. You produce and you want. If we invest in each other, you will produce the Ruach HaKodesh and the children. And the boys and in the girls when we dedicate our children back to Yah. We dedicate our families back to Yah. Our tribes, nation, back to Yah. Our world, back to Yah. You know what I'm saying? But that's just to encourage everyone. When man and one, man and woman come together, become one. If they are if they're on point, they will reveal the fire of Yah. But if they don't put if they uh if they don't focus on Yah, the man has fire. Only only thing he can produce is fire. Woman has fire. And when you bring it forth fire, that can be a great destruction to your family, to your nation, to your world. You know what I'm saying? So Yah is showing you the fingerprint that he he said male and female created he them. Ish and Isha created he them. That's Yah. That's the handprint of Yah. So I just want to say, may Yah bless you. May Yah keep you. May Yah shine his face upon you and give you peace. Um, blessings to all of you. And it was Yah the one that created us. It was Yah. He created the heavens and the earth. It was Yah who created Eden. Or Middle East, Africa. And y'all created Africa. Y'all created Middle East. What are we talking about? Y'all created Eden that we call today Africa. Y'all did that. Yo, hey. Y'all did it. Y'all gave us the promised land. Y'all basically told us, you know what y'all is basically telling us? Our land is really guarding the Garden of Eden. And when, we, when you're right, remember in the garden? When you're right, you can stay in the garden. When you're not right, you get kicked out. And we was cast out of the Garden of Eden. And we was cast out of Israel. So Israel, we got to do right. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to say, is the Bible the white man's book? No, not at all. The Bible is not a white man's book. And remember, we received the Torah in 146 BCE. It was just us, the Afro-Asiatic, melanated, black, Hebrews, the Shemitic Africans or Shem or or um, Afro-Asiatic Central Shemitic Hebrews, and then you had, um, then you have Kemet, which was they're part of the. If you look at Afro-Asiatic, if you look at the sixth classification, yes, yes, Hallelujah. If you look at the sixth classification of Afro-Asiatic, it even says Egypt or Kemet is one of them too. But a lot of people they don't accept that they're Afro-Asiatic as well. They're Hamitic Afro-Asiatic. Hebrews, we're Shemitic, Afro-Asiatic. So you got Hamitic and Shemitic kind of going back and forth, head to head. But also, you know, they they helped us, man. They saved us. And we, you know, we're family because we have Ephraim and Manasseh. And when it comes down to right there in Babylon, right, you have Cush, you have Nimrod. We married Cushites as well. Moshe had a Midianite wife and he had a Cushite wife. Midianite is Shemitic. Kushite is Hamitic. You see what I'm saying? And remember, Kush is Oromo or Somali. Shemitic, you have the Midianites are Shemitic. Ishmaelites are Shemitic, right? Edomites is, is Shemitic. And Southern Shemitic is Tigray, Tigrinya, which is Eritrean. They're Shemitic Africans. And Amharic, which is Ethiopia. They're Shemitic Africans. So when you see an Amharic Ethiopian, when you see a Tigrinian Eritrean, don't ever call them ham, ever in life. Don't ever say you're ham, you're hamatic. That's lazy. They're Shemitic. They're Southern Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at, if you look at Tigrinya, it goes back 
to Yemen. If you look at uh, Tigrayan, Eritrean, they go back to Yemen. Yemen goes back to Sheba. Shemitic Sheba. Sheba go. They even say Sheba goes back to Israel. So my wife, she's Tigrinya, Eritrean. She's first of all, she's Southern Shemitic. She's not Ham. Second of all, the Tigrayan history goes back to Hebrew as well. Possibly, if I'm not mistaken, the tribe of Judah. I did my DNA. It goes back to Madagascar, Babylon and Timbuktu. There's a connection between Madagascar and Eritrea. So I connected back to my Israelite wife. I'm not with no Hamite. Let's get that straight too. And I don't hate Hamites either because we got that in our tribe. That means we're going to have to cast out Ephraim and Manasseh. So, you know, I'm just a different type of Hebrew. I'm just clearing up as much as I can. I'm trying to use Afroasiatic Hebrew to be a think tank, to be a resource, to clean up a lot of stuff. And even when it comes down to marriage, we deal with, uh, we deal with adults, consenting adults. So we don't deal with kids. You know, the law says 18, 18 still kind of young. I would say 21, starting at 21, but because the law say 18, Hebrews, you should need to be doing stuff right so it don't make us look like a cult, don't make us look crazy out here. Regardless of what people was doing back in the day, 18 is a legal and adult, so it's 18 and up. You feel what I'm saying? But me personally, hey, I drink Yayin. If I can't have a, a glass of Yayin with you, which is 21, that's too young for me. But hey, that's me. But anyway, um, going forth, I just want to let that be known too, that I don't hate I don't hate Edom. I don't hate uh, Kemet. I don't hate Ham. I don't hate the Gentiles. Because there are some Gentiles that, remember the strangers that was amongst us, you know, there will be some people that will be strangers among, not everybody, there will be some, a small remnant, that will be strangers amongst us that's going to follow these Torah, follow these laws. And if they want to do that, we salute them. That's why I always say Shabbat Shalom to the 12 tribes worldwide and the believing Gentiles. You know, Ruth was a believing Gentile. And I deal, and I want to say this, with the Afroasiatic, I deal with Beber. I deal with Northern Beber. The Moors come from that. I deal with Eastern Cushetic, Somalis, Afar, and Aromos. They are the Cushites. And then I deal with Shemitic. You have Southern Shemitic, which is Tigray, Tigrinya, and Amhart. <clears throat> and Central Shemitic, which is Hebrews, which is Ishmaelites, which is Midianites, our ancient forefathers, the Sumerians, they're Shemitic. They're Central Shemitic. You feel what I'm saying? The Babylonians, I think they're Shemitic. They're Central Shemitic. So we are Hebrews, we are the leaders of Central Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? So I deal with the language of Hebrew. I deal with the language of Arabic. I deal with the language of Tigrinya, and I deal with the language of Amharic. And as a bonus, I deal with Aroma and Somali. I know these people. These are my family. I speak to them. They show me love. I show them love. Shout out to you all if you're listening to my Habasha people. When you say Habasha, that's Southern Shemitic. Habasha are Shemitic Africans. Habasha, again, that's Amharic. That's Tigrinya. That's Tigray. They're Shemitic Africans. They're Southern Shemitic. And their language is neck and neck with Hebrew. You have Gimel in Hebrew. You have Gimel in Tigrinya. Stop playing. You got bait in Hebrew house. You got bait in Tigrinya. Stop playing. You got Mayim as water in, in Hebrew. You got my in Tigrinya. Stop playing. You got Shemayim as heaven. You got Samai in Tigrinya. Stop playing. So I just want to say that. Sorry. May y'all bless you. May y'all keep you. May you shine the face upon you and give you peace. Love you all. I hope it edified. I hope it encouraged. Whatever mistakes I've made, that's on me. You've been edified. That's Yah. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom.